Hello everyone, JH Medium here and today we are in Georgetown, Penang. In this video, I will share with you everything I ate in one of the best street food cities in the world. And we will explore the vibrant heart of this historical island. All right, let's go eat. Most of these breakfast places in Penang are just carts outside a storefront. It sort of feels like a hawker center because you can try a variety of different dishes, but the space is owned by the drink shop, so you have to order a drink to dine in. They give you this number to place at the table after you order. We got a dry wonton meat and a wonton soup. At first, I thought they gave us the wrong dish because it looks like a lao mian with a bowl of wonton soup next to it. I guess it will make more sense to plate the wontons on top of the noodles, but we'll just keep it like this for now. It's pretty salty, but the flavor is good. That's why the wonton soup is such a good combo with this dry dish. It's a pork wonton, very meaty and delicious. A great brunch to start the day. Before we head to our next meal, it's time to explore Georgetown. If you're just traveling downtown, you can take the free CAT bus that loops the central area. We're here at the Esplade walkway. The water is so beautiful, but in hindsight, we probably shouldn't come here in the daytime because the reflection of the sun off the ground, I can barely open my eyes. <laughs> It got way too hot in the afternoon, literally to the point where my camera had an overheating alert. So let's fast forward to the evening and continue this food tour. For dinner today, we are at Kimberly Street. It's sort of a night market, but it's more like just at this intersection. And we're gonna try some of Penang's best street food. First up, Kuei Chop. We ordered a duck Kuei Chop. It's basically a thin sheet of rice and then rolled up and cut into strips of noodles. There are so many ingredients in here. Obviously there's duck meat, but there's also pig's ear, duck blood tofu, intestines, and a braised egg. We got some intestines here and we're gonna dip it in the sauce. This kuei chop really is the perfect combo of flavor and texture. The soft rice rolls soak up all the duck flavor from the broth, while the pig's ear and intestines give the whole dish a really crunchy, chewy texture. If you're afraid of that stuff, maybe this is not the dish for you, but the kuei chop itself is so good. For dessert, we got a si guo tang, which literally means four ingredient soup. But I think there's way more than four in here. Nice, refreshing way to end the meal. Okay, on to the next dish. Next up, we're having kuei tao soup. Rice noodles really is such a versatile ingredient. But unlike kuei chop, it has a clear broth. There's a poached egg on top of here, which is really exciting. I'm not sure if we're supposed to do this or not, but I'm gonna break the egg yolk. Now it's like an egg drop soup. Okay, let's try it. There's a very seafoody taste to it, probably from the fish cake and the fish balls. There's also some pork patties and some pork liver in here. Very simple but hearty dish. The last must-try dish on Kimberly Street is Chagui Tiao, but we actually had it when we arrived in Georgetown yesterday. We ate too much carbs tonight already, so we'll skip it for now. We've tried all four kings of street food here on Kimberly Street. We had the kuei chop, the sikol soup, the kuei tiao soup, and we had chan kuei tiao yesterday. But my favorite of those is definitely the duck kuei chop. I was surprised by all the ingredients they put inside. Individually, they might seem a little bit scary to some people, but honestly, the flavor was just incredible. And one bonus dish before we go back home, belakan fried chicken. Day two in Georgetown, Penang, and today we're gonna explore the vibrant Old Town, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. My favorite thing about Georgetown, I mean, other than the food, is of course all the street art you can find here. And it's not just in the Armenian street, you can find it all over the city. Mm -hmm. 
We're now here at the clan jetties. The jetties are these houses built on stilts over the water. Each jetty is owned by a family and this one is the Chu jetty. The jetties are like their own little town with shops, accommodation and more. Unfortunately, many jetties were also destroyed or taken down in previous years due to their structural vulnerability and the valuable land they sit on. Okay, I think it's about time to go back to the food tour. After some walking around, now it's time for dessert and we're gonna try some douhua. My family also makes douhua in Taiwan, so let's see how this compares. This is a grass jelly douhua. It's actually a little bit bitter from the grass jelly, which is nice. Otherwise, the sugar will be overpowering. We also got a butterfly pea douhua. It's so blue. There's no extra flavor. I think it's purely for the blue color. Overall, not bad. But of course, this is not really enough for a meal. And the rain clouds are warning us to go back home soon. So, on to the next restaurant. For dinner today, we're gonna have Hokkien noodles. I ordered a braised sauce noodles and Rika ordered the traditional type Hokkien noodles. It's pretty interesting that there's no seating inside the restaurant, so they just put the table at the side of the road outside of someone else's store. The sauce is so thick, you gotta mix it up really well. Don't get me wrong, the flavor is excellent, but I'd say I'm not that big of a fan of this sticky, gooey texture. I guess I shouldn't have ordered the kui tiao, because it definitely makes this even stickier than it should be. Now let's try the more traditional Hokkien prawn meat. Ah yes, this is much better. Really strong shrimp flavor, not too spicy. I definitely prefer a more soupy noodle dish. So which one do you prefer? Love it. Good morning from Georgetown, Penang. It's another day, which means another day of eating. And our first food stop for breakfast is Hainanese chicken rice. Very delicious chicken rice. Honestly, it's hard to go wrong. It's just brilliant comfort food. So yeah, you don't need to be in Singapore to have good chicken rice. Next up on today's agenda, white curry noodles. I'm so excited to try this. It looks so different from any curry I've ever had. First, I'm gonna try the broth. What? I can taste the seafood. It's super, super salty. It tastes kind of similar to a normal curry, but I can't believe it's white. Maybe it's because they put a lot of coconut milk inside. On paper, it's supposed to be very delicious, but I think the seasoning definitely let this dish down. I feel like the salt just drowned out all the other flavor. So unfortunately, I don't really like this dish. If you had a better experience at this restaurant, please let me know if it's always like this or not. We wanted to explore more of the city, but today it started raining around noon. So I guess we'll head back and rest. It is our last day in Malaysia and once again we're at a Kopitiam Hawker Center type of place for breakfast. And before we leave Malaysia, of course we gotta have nasi lemak one more time. The nasi lemak here is green instead of white, probably from the pandan. It's also served with curry chicken. Can't really taste the pandan, but the rich curry flavors are delicious. Coconutty, spicy, and just super crunchy with those fried anchovies. Nasi lemak, you can never go wrong. We also again got Penang Chao Kui Tiao. It's not the Chao Kui Tiao flavor I'm used to. I'm more used to having Singaporean Chao Kui Tiao, which uses dark soy sauce and is a bit sweeter. Here in Penang, it's lighter colored and slightly more salty. I think maybe I prefer Singapore Chao Kui Tiao. Sorry to you Malaysians watching, but without a doubt, both versions are excellent. I'm gonna miss Nasi Lemak so much. I already lost count how many times we had it on this Malaysia trip. I just wish we can find it in other places around the world because I definitely want to have Nasi Lemak again. Since this is our last day here, no time to waste. On to our next meal. We were supposed to have breakfast here on one of the days, but there's always so many people lining up in the morning. So afternoon tea it is. I ordered a pineapple bun with kaya and butter inside. Let's try. Kaya butter really is the best form of butter. And it's so flaky, all of it is falling off. Rika ordered coffee toast kaya butter. Looks super crispy. 
the coffee flavor inside is actually really strong. It's like biting into coffee. Unbelievable. Kaya toast is so simple. It's just toast and spread. Yeah, it's probably one of the best breakfasts or snacks ever invented. We weren't planning on having this, but we stumbled upon an ice cream shop and we just have to come in and get some ice cream because it's so hot outside. We got the burnt butter and sage ice cream. The sage flavor is quite overpowering. I'm quite surprised the spice like sage can be put into ice cream. Really unique. For our last night in Penang and our last night in Malaysia, we're here at Chulia Street, which is famous for its bars, but we're not here to drink. We're here to eat more street food. For our first dish of the night market, lopak, braised meat, but actually it seems more like deep fried meat. So this right here is the star lopak. It's a deep fried meat roll. We also got fish balls, tofu skin, and more. This looks more like a snack, but we're gonna have it as our appetizer today. Dip it in the sauce and let's try. We also have here a deep fried shumai. I never knew you can cook shumai like this. <laughs> Living in Hong Kong and Guangdong province for so long, this is the first time I had it deep fried. I think it's pretty good. This is a tofu skin and it's already deep fried. Usually we will cook it in hot pot, but here you eat it sort of like a potato chip. Tofu chip. <laughs> Really crispy, but really strange way to eat this. I think I'd still prefer to put this in a hot pot. Let's move on to the next dish. And now, sadly, our last dish of the night. Lok lok. It literally means to dip. But with a play on words, here they also use the characters happy happy with the same pronunciation because this is a fun and enjoyable dish to eat. It's basically the same concept as satay salap we had in Malacca, but we all gather here around the lok lok stand. It looks like there's a satay sauce and a sweet and sour sauce. Scoop some of the sauce onto the food. Make sure that the food is covered by the satay. There are colors on the end of each stick and they correspond to different prices. So for example, the black one is 0.7. I'm gonna try the fish cake first. Satay sauce is still the best. This really is like the quintessential image of Southeast Asia. Standing next to the street, enjoying some good food. This sums up our food adventure here in Georgetown, Penang. I know Penang is considered the food capital of Malaysia, but I did not expect there to be this much good food. Unlike many places where good street food is concentrated in one area, here there are good looking restaurants or stalls on every single corner. We literally cannot stop eating. There's so many other dishes such as roti kanai and nasi kandar that we wanted to try, but we do have a limited amount of stomach space. That also means we have a reason to come back. This has been an unforgettable food adventure. I'm not gonna say which dish here I thought was the best because that's just impossible. Come to Penang and see for yourself. That's also it for our Malaysia travel series. Hope you guys like this one and see you guys soon. Bye-bye.